Deeks, let's have a quick reflection on uh, on Saturday afternoon. First off, uh, what did you what what did you make of it as a coaching group? Um, no, we thought it was good. Um, got a lot of players some game time. Um, a lot of those players were young. Um, lots of mixed combinations we got through, um, and we won the game. So in the end, we was um, we was pleased overall. We spoke to uh, to Roland after the game, obviously, and I think that the first thing that came out of it was the character, really, to come back from 14-0 down and, and Jersey having played pretty well to get to that and, and been very physical in their approach and to come back to that to score two tries before, you know, to uh, straight away, to tie it up and then to win it at the end as well was, uh, you know, to kind of bodes well mentally, if nothing else. Yeah, definitely. Um, I actually feared the worst when we were 14 nil down because... We started uh, fairly slow. We were losing collisions, but actually, as the game progressed, we we sort of grew into the game and we got we got better as the game went on. So, shows that we are we're fit. Um, so, all the hard work they've been putting in in the last five months of preseason is sort of paying off. And um, yeah, the resilience as well was good to see. That you know, fourteen nil down is quite a big score. So you, your heads could go down. And um, with a lot of young lads on the pitch, Tom Ball. You know, making his debut, scoring a great try. Um, the resilience was great. And um, one of the other pleasing things was that we took our opportunities as well. So every opportunity we got, we actually took them. Um, and we thought that was great. And playing quite a lot of heads up rugby as well. You think of, you know, Nick Dolly's second try. You know, there's the opportunity. He's there. Tap, burrow over. Nobody's, even the camera guys were we're off kind of looking in the other corner, expecting something different. And then, and obviously Tom Emery's try as well and, and Knocker's interception for the second one, you know, it showed a really good variety of attacking play. Yeah, definitely that, um, you know, um, it probably suits some of the players we've got to play in sort of a higher tempo, quick game. Um, that probably shown at the weekend. It was also nice from a force point of view, we, we managed to keep going well, that which we thought was good last year was our driving more. We've got a nice more try. So, like you say, yeah, a real good balance of the scores across the board. And and also, and I guess this is almost the most important thing, is that it's all not um it's not complete roses in the garden on that. I think they came out of it with everybody thinking there's plenty to work on. Oh, definitely, there's loads to work on, yeah. Um you know, the first, there was a lot of mistakes. The first hit out was always going to be mistakes. And I suppose when when you're trying out new combinations and a lot of new players playing the game, there's going to be mistakes. But in terms of game model and the style we wanted to play, we were, we were pleased with that. But yeah, there's always those those improvements we can make. As far as the coaching group is concerned, you know, how's it been? I mean, you are now the longest serving coach within the group in terms of who's been at the club the longest. So, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, with uh, James Caseborough coming in last summer and, and then Roscoe and, and Tony Fenner uh, taking over after Ant left before Christmas, how's, how's everything gelling on a practical basis? No, it's good. Like, we don't have a head coach. So, um, a lot of the times we, we have quite some deep debates around how we should be playing the game. And I think that's quite healthy that, you know, we all have our opinion and they sort of meet in the middle. So that's probably different to some other environments and clubs that, they, you know, they have a head coach to set the way we're going to play and, and all that. But, um, yeah, it's gone well. Um, obviously, Ant's a, a, a loss to us, but... Um, Ross Stewart stepped up really well with the attack. The attack's, you know, looking good. Um, we all, you know, get on well as coaches, which is a good starting point. So, um, yeah, it's been great so far. And in terms of getting the senior players involved in that as well, I mean, I've, I've mentioned Tony Fenner, but, you know, um, you know, when you've got the likes of Andy Forsyth and Phil Bolton and other players who've been around the block several times, you know, to, to have that, that kind of contribution as well, is that, um, you know, in terms of spreading the load or, or, or a positive approach for that, how is, how is that all going down? We wouldn't say we spread it in terms of giving them the, an opportunity to coach, but probably more along the lines that you know we hand it over to them. Like we we, we sort of deliver what we what we think's right, you know, in terms of approach, game style, and then we hand it over to the players. So the early part of the week is all about coaching coaches' delivery, and then we sort of slowly back off towards the end of the week because at the end of the day, it's the players that go out on the field and they've got to go and deliver 
deliver deliver the performance. So yeah, the senior players p- play a huge part in all that. And speaking of delivery and and senior players stepping up, you know, there's a lot of players with Premiership experience now within the group, and to go away to Saracens, regardless of the results they've had recently, um, you know, against Ealing in, in the Trail Finders Cup. I mean, every and Ch- Trail Finders Challenge, everybody's now looking to to step up in the last two weeks before the start of the season. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Look, it's um, it's going to be a a big test for for a lot of the guys, and it's probably one that the guys are really relishing to test themselves against, you know, Premiership and European past champions. So, um, the lads are really looking forward to that, and it's a huge test for them to see where they are compared to to those guys. Sorry, this is the inevitable Zoom cat. Sorry, it's <laughs> having to get rid of the Zoom cat. Sorry. I uh, apologise for that and, and everybody who's going to be watching this later in terms of the attack. The, I think everybody's having either small children or, or, or pet animals coming onto their Zoom chat. Have you guys coped with, actually, have you guys coped with that kind of in the virtual stuff? Is it, is it been easier than you thought? Has it been harder than you thought? Or has it, been, or has it just been about average? Um, it is hard, yeah. Um, you know, we've we've had lots and lots of Zoom meetings um, since we were, since last March, and planning and all those sort of things. And trying to plan over Zoom is quite difficult at times, certainly when you you all trying to talk at the same time and that. So that's that's been challenging. But I think it's just a new way of doing things now. Like a lot, you, you just got to do it. Like our our training environment in terms of analysis and all those sort of things now have to be done by Zoom and messages and WhatsApps and all those sort of things just to get, you know, your, your footage and your clips across to the players so they're learning all the time. So, yeah, it's been a huge challenge, but you just got to adapt and think outside the box, I suppose. Anyway, going back to Saracens uh, for a minute, I think, you know, I was speaking to Ben Nutley the other day and, you know, and he's he's played Saracens a lot as a player. You played Saracens a lot as a player. I mean, there there is this Saracens way of doing. You know, you do know what's going to be coming at you, don't you? Yeah, like Saracens are a massive uh, sort of pressure team. They they use their kicking game to put pressure on you, um, make you play in your own half, and force you to try and make force you to make mistakes. Um, and that's when they capitalise. You know, on them. Um, it's a bit like the the. Doncaster game, Saracens, Doncaster at the weekend. Doncaster actually played very well. Um, but Saracens just kept getting out, putting them under pressure. And when they got an opportunity, they took them. And that's that's what the quality teams do. And, you know, so in terms of there being no secrets at that, is it just a question of, is again, is, is Saturday as much, is it still just more about performance than about result? And then are you looking for a noticeable step up between the away game and the home game? Or are you not looking ahead that, that far ahead yet? No, we obviously, um, we're picking more of a, a stable sort of group this time, not so many players. Um, when I say stable, I mean players that have played for the club on a regular basis last year. So, um, yeah, we're looking for an improvement in our our performance this week, um, and it's not trying to stop Saracens what they do. It's probably how we can ad- adapt and sort of stamp our mark on the game. Um, you know, I'm sure the lads are looking forward to getting stuck in and and proving a point, and just like I said before, just seeing where they are. And in terms of looking ahead, I mean, having just said, are you looking too far ahead? I think, you know, everybody's now got that, that weekend of the 6th of March very much at the back of their minds, don't they? Yeah, like every, um, every sort of game from now on is that that's in the, in the you know, in the, in the future and we're planning and we're building towards that. Um, every time we take the field now for the next two games, we've got to see areas of our game where we've improved. Um, so we can hit the ground running on on that first game against Bedford on 6th March. 